Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am so happy to have Jasmine Murphy here with us today. Jasmine, how are you? I am phenomenal. How are you? I'm beautiful. I'm even better looking at your gorgeous face. And I I wanted to start off today's episode. First of all, I already shared this before we got on, is that I have a whole new format because Voss's brain, yes, I'm talking about myself in third person, Voss's brain works a mile a minute and 100 miles a minute. And so I got some structure for this podcast. So I'm going to start off with some rapid fire questions. <laughs> I love it. Okay, great. So here is my first question. Oh my God, this is so funny. Um, What's something you've never been able to do well? (laughs) This is hilarious. I cannot whistle. Oh my God. I can't whistle. I'm a great whistler. Oh my God. It does not. It was like my mouth cannot make it happen. And my mom and my stepmom are both, they can do that really loud, like two finger but without their fingers. And I don't know why it escaped me. And I always wanted to play the flute growing up and I never could because I can't whistle. So, (laughs) well, first of all, I love that we started with this question and here's why, because on the Say It Out Loud podcast, right? What we're really trying to do here is say the things about ourselves, no matter how small or big, right? Like whether you can whistle or not, obviously that's very funny, right? But I, I, I want my audience to really, um, to, to see the power and just being able to be free. And just yes. like, oh, I can't do this well. I can't whistle. I'm sure there's plenty of things that we can't do well, but I, I just love the spontaneity in which you answered that question. And so, you know, I ask these questions because I want this podcast to be a safe space for us to share our shit, share yes. our shit, because I truly believe our shame shrivels when we say it out loud. So thank you for that. I know, you I know you can't whistle, but there are many other things that you can do. And <laughs> Okay, so how's this next question? What's something you think everyone should try at least once? Ooh. I think that everyone should try at least once spending like four to six hours with themselves, just with themselves out, doing the things that you would typically feel are coupled activities. So plan an entire date with yourself. Everyone should do that at least once. I, you are speaking my language because, are you in a relationship by the way? I am. You are. So I, I really appreciate you saying that because even I'm not in a relationship, but I know so many of my friends who are in relationships and they, they do couple things obviously with their partner, but they won't do those things with themselves. Yeah. I had to learn that in my singleness, like all the things that I wanted, like take me out to a nice Italian dinner or let's go do this or get a couple's massage or just, you know, or like, or like go to a, a farmer's market, like like little things that I'm always like, oh, this is just husband worthy. Like I can only do right. this if I'm married or in a partnership. Um, I love that you said that. So what's something that you enjoy doing out like by yourself for four to six hours? Like give me your, your most recent experience of doing that. Um, gosh, there are so many things that I love. I love, love. So first of all, I'm in this technological world and my whole life is like surrounded by technology. I am still like old school analog, love hard back, real paper books, love vinyl, love like all of the things. And so, um, it's visiting the bookstore, like finding these little niche cute little boutique bookstores and going to finding these record shops. Um, I love like going to tapas places and, you know, just finding these little hole in the wall places that aren't big chains, but you get to have these experiences at. So the live music, I mean, of course the movies is like the, the one thing that I don't know. I heard someone say the other day, I've never gone to the movies by myself. And I had to stop and think like, Okay, I just need to say this out loud. If I, I, it is really hard for me to trust someone if they tell me that they don't like being alone, that they can't go on vacation by themselves, that they can't eat by themselves, and that tells me you don't like being with yourself. And if you don't like being with yourself, why the hell should I like being with you? If you're not, I think so many people, go ahead. Yeah, I think people are so uncomfortable being with themselves because we're taught to be around people. 
we're taught whether whether you're being taught community or whether you're being taught whether you're from a big family or whether you're you were taught that your happiness and worthiness was connected to being coupled to someone. I mean, there are so many reasons why. Mm-hmm. But so many people aren't we're like buddy system, right? Especially if you have a certain age. Right. You grew up with the buddy system. You go everywhere with someone. You don't go by yourself. Mm-hmm. And so you have like stopping and thinking about how ingrained that is in us. And it wasn't until I want to say probably seven years ago when I was going through a transition in my life and was like, okay, I need to do the things that make me happy because I, I let go of all those things and talking to girlfriends and realizing like so many of them hadn't had these experiences. Mm. They just really didn't feel comfortable being alone. They didn't know like, well, who do I talk to? Well, what do I do? And I'm like, who do you talk to? I have full conversations what, with what? myself in my head. Yes, I'm, listen, I'm never, no, no, that's weird. at least, no, it's not weird. At least when you talk to yourself, you know, somebody's listening. Like that's what I'm like, right. I'm listening. I, I don't ever get bored. You know how many voices I have up here? Listen, right? <laughs> Fucking crazy. Like, I know, but like, I own it. I'm like, yeah, I can literally talk myself through any situation. I can, right. I, I, and I don't mean uh, convince myself that it's not happening. I can coach myself. I can talk to myself and soothe myself through the most devastating of experiences because right. I'm, I'm, I'm able to, I'm able to have that dialogue with myself. I love that you said that. And then also, especially as women, you know, we, we're taught to just be scared, right? Yeah. Be scared. Like, oh, like I, I, I know, especially in the Indian culture, one thing that I heard all the time before I got married and I'm divorced now, but we, you know, we were always told, you know, you got to settle down. You got to mm-hmm. settle. You, okay. It's time for you to get settled. And I was just like, what does that actually mean? Oh, so settled means that I have a house, that I have a husband, that I have kids and I'm no longer what frolicking the planet and I'm not traveling. Like I never understood what that means to to settle down. And it was always like, if you don't have a man, you have to feel unsafe and scared, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of women shy away from doing things alone. I'm really happy that you spoke mm-hmm. to that. Okay. Next question. If you had to work on only one project for the next year, what would it be? Oh my God. That's torture. <laughs> I, know, right? I mean, it's like, I need at least five to be, to feel right. alive. Yeah. But go oh ahead. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This, it's a whole issue. I, I was just talking to somebody yesterday and I'm like, yes, I, I, innovate these new things to do. And then I'm like, okay, I don't know where to start. I get overwhelmed. And so I just create a whole new thing. I love I keep going. Yeah. If I had to work on one project for an entire year, what would it be? <sighs> I think it would probably be one of the things that I'm doing now, which is, is one of the things that is like nearest to my heart. And it's my membership community where I'm building a whole community for women in larger bodies to be able to experience themselves and their relationships to all of these different facets of life, um, where they are now without guilt or shame. So we teach joyful movement. We're teaching how to redefine your relationship with food and nutrition and lifestyle experiences. And so it's not just, you know, diet and exercise. It's how we navigate the world, how we show up in the world. Um, and, and I really want that to become the premier place for, women that are learning how to redefine their lives, um, especially those of us that have been marginalized because of mm-hmm. our race, our size, and you know all of those things. And so I think that would be the thing that I would focus on if I had to choose just one. Oh, but that's so hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, so but I, I love that. I, I love that you, you wanna create a community for women who have felt marginalized and show them, no, you can still live a whole full life and not let you know, the size of your body stop you and who better to lead that charge than you who you know you seem to me and i we've literally just met this is our first time meeting on this podcast i know we exchanged a few voice notes but it's like i i my perception of you is you know you have your family you're in a partnership but you are very much your own person like you are your own person and i i love that you said like 
Actually, I think this might be a sign from God because I've been wanting to get a vinyl disc player because we used to have one back in the day. And oh. Every time I go to the bookstore and I see vinyls, I'm like, oh, I want to get the Fugees. I want to get Michael Jackson. Like, I, there's so yeah. many albums. I'm like, I should probably get a record player. No, but like, I see that about you. Like, you have your own, you are your own person first and foremost. And I love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're it's welcome. taken work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I know. It's not easy because, you know, you, you have to learn how to be with yourself and like yourself. Yeah. Who you are. Um, okay, and then last question before we get into more of the say it out loud questions is when you have 30 minutes of free time, how do you pass the time? Uh, this is easy. Usually it's taking a nap. <laughs> Don't spit. No, yeah. I, I am a card carrying member of the nap ministry. I believe that any stress in your life can be solved with nap and a good orgasm and some money. And typically the nap is the first thing because when you're stressed, all of these things are firing in your head and your body has a physical visceral reaction. And it's very hard to, to approach things from a logical and, and calm standpoint when your body is, is in fight or flight. Right. And so for me, it's like, okay, slow down, take a nap, mm -hmm. give yourself 20, 30 minutes, get back up. And now what? And What's now next? what? Yeah. yeah. And what I want everyone to hear is that a nap is not something that's like a reward. Okay. Like you get to nap simply because you're tired. Absolutely. You you, and you do not have to get to the point of burnout to then take a nap. In fact, napping should be a part of maybe your everyday yeah. life, right? You just need to, you just need to rest. I love that you said Listen, that. Listen, it's built into my schedule and I don't apologize for it. I'm like, yes. this is what time I wake up and start working. And this is my nap time. And then this is my second part of my day. And that's, that's the life that I wanted to build that felt good for me that let me show up in my best. And so that's just what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try, you know what? So, so right before you and I got on here, I was actually being interviewed on a podcast and mm -hmm. the host asked me, what are three things that you do consistently? And so the second thing that I said that I do consistently is that I schedule in playtime. Like if I'm not having fun, Jasmine, I am like death. I am I am the worst person to, I don't even like being around myself. When I'm not having fun or if I don't feel like hyped up about life, like right. I just, I, I'm miserable. And so I schedule in my playtime, right? But yeah. I think what I wanna, I wanna try this um, and I am gonna be, you know, turning 40 next month. And one of the things- Welcome that, to the 40 Club. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I feel, I am so excited to get the fuck out of my 30s. I'm like, oh my God. I was <laughs> laughing to, I, I got like super stoned last week and I was la laying in bed laughing to myself like, you know, so many women don't want to be 40. They don't want to get older. I'm like, hell yeah, we've gone through some shit. We are ready to right. live. We are ready to be 40. Like I'm excited. Like I feel these layers just have completely just, they're just melted off. They're just melted. Yes. But my, my point is I'm always willing to take something new into my new decade. I love the idea of scheduling naps. I think I'm going to do that. You should try it. It's I'm a gonna, fun thing. <laughs> it is a fun thing. No, I will take it from you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And everyone listening, if that, if that resonates with you, scheduling and fun, scheduling your naps, do that. Okay. So this is the Say It Out Loud podcast. So I want to really look at um, maybe areas in your life that you've ever struggled with because I always want my audience to see themselves in my guests and in our conversation. So when did you learn that it was safer to lie than it was to say things out loud? Yeah. Um, gosh, that is such a good question. And the answer to that is as soon as I learned to talk, mm. as soon as I learned to talk, um, I was one of the, the realities that I had to face as I started discovering myself and, um, what I wanted in life and why my life had transpired the way it was is, you know, at what point in my life did I stop feeling comfortable being my authentic self, right? Like when you think about the little five-year-old girl in the tutu with the mismatching shoes and the superhero cape and she feel like, when did I stop feeling like I could show up like that? And, and I had to answer, I never felt like I could show up like that. I was the product of a 
mother that didn't want to have children when she did and a father that didn't want any more children. And that narrative was told to me, I don't even remember at what age, but as long as I can remember, right? Um, coming from a biracial relationship, there was that dynamic. And, you know, this side of the family has this problem. This side of the family has this problem. This is said this, you know, and, and then being a part of a blended family had its own, you know, um, had its own struggles and challenges. Um, it had its beauty as well. Mm -hmm. So I never want to discount that. Um, but from a very young age, I learned that I had to apologize for my existence to make people feel comfortable. And then came not always speaking my truth or lying to make people feel comfortable with my existence. I, and so it was a lot of undoing of that from, from the very, from day one. Yeah, I mean, when, thank you so much for sharing that. I, I'm oftentimes when I don't respond right away, it's because I'm like heavily, deeply processing what you're saying. So that's actually a good sign. If I don't have a response, I'm like, God damn it. I felt that on every level. Like I was thinking, you know, growing up, my parents are immigrants and my mom being the eldest, she brought all of her siblings over to, you know, always come through our house. Our house felt like uh, a train station all the time. And so I always just felt like, man, I'm invisible, right? And so I learned, so it's interesting, Jasmine, because I learned how to scream to be heard. I, I didn't actually have a problem with saying it out loud. Gotcha. Um, what I had a problem was is that I, I didn't, I needed to learn how to talk to myself, right? I didn't know how to talk to myself. And with you, what I really hear you saying is really from the time that you were born or, or from the time that you could learn to speak, you were clearly given the message, please just go in the corner and like be invisible, right? Like just please don't talk, right? And so you learned what not to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yeah. And so it's, it, and I'm, I'm just thank you for saying, and being so honest that it's been an undoing. And I'm sure every day it's still an undoing, right? It's not just like, oh, I'm here. I'm now, I mean, like every, that's what I want everyone to hear. I think a lot of times it's, it, it's easy to look at someone like me and be like, oh, you have no problem saying it out loud. It's like, no, I struggle in my love life. I actually yeah. struggle saying it out loud. So like, I, I mean, are there still, and then actually this leads me to my next question. Um, what is something that, you know, as you, as you're in this journey of learning to say it out loud, be more of yourself, be more authentic. What is something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but you haven't? And so maybe this is your first time even saying <laughs> that out loud here on the podcast. What's something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but you haven't? Mm. And this is going to be it. And that, wait, hold on. I, I want to preface it because whatever the thing that you haven't been saying out loud for fear of rejection, disapproval, or I'm going to be too much, people aren't going to understand. That's the very thing that we need to start saying, right? It's the, and, and, and like, for me, I remember it's like, oh, I don't want people to know and experience my anger because I, they're going to be afraid of my anger. But I realized when I learned how to channel my anger into my work, I actually became more powerful. I became more powerful, right? Because I, I learned to do something with that anger. I channeled it. I transformed that energy. So I'd love to hear from you. Yes. What is something you've been wanting to say out loud, but you haven't until now? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, an another amazing question. And it would be so easy to take that stance of... <sighs> Mm. It would be so easy to take the stance of something that was maybe um, something I wanted to say to somebody or a truth that I wanted to proclaim um, that seemed fringe. And the thing that I want to say out loud that I have not allowed myself to say, and I haven't, I'm going to preface it by saying I haven't allowed myself to say this, not for for no other reason than the fact that I never wanted, and so this goes back to what we were just talking about, about apologizing for existence. I never wanted anybody to feel bad or less than or less capable, right? And so the thing that I have not said, I haven't allowed myself to say, and so I haven't allowed myself to truly embody, but I know it in the depth 
depths of my soul and two really good friends of, of ours, mutual friends of ours have been saying this to me for a while and I just haven't allowed myself to say it is that I am fucking good at what I do. I am good at what I do and I am meant to be here to do this. And I stop myself from saying it because I, it pains me when people show up and they say, I wish I was as fill in the blank as you. I wish I was that. And so my default answer has always been, no, I'm not any, any different than you. I'm not any more special than you. I'm just a girl from Kansas. I'm just a mom with two kids showing up, but I'm done saying that. So I'm fucking good at what I do. So let's, let's thank you for sharing that. I know you, I know who your two friends are, our mutual <laughs> friends, and they have helped me with that too. Warren and Roberto, we love you so much. Absolutely. They, Warren and both Roberto have, since they've entered into my life, and I, I want to say their names out loud because they're amazing and people need to know who they are. Um, war, like anytime I share something, Warren and Roberto are like, look at you go. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, yeah, really, fucking really. And I, I get yes. that, Jasmine. Thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. So I would like to ask you a follow-up question. What is it that you're really good at, that you're really amazing at? Because you said, I'm really, a, I'm really good at this. Like, what is that that you are so good at, that you are so amazing at? Um, what is it that I'm so amazing at? I'm really fucking amazing at connecting with people. Mm -hmm. I'm amazing at connecting with people, at teaching people how to do things in a way that might not be the typical, quote unquote, typical, conventional yeah. mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. but still brings them the results and shows them that they can have the thing that they thought that they could not have. And this is across the board. This is something that I have consistently shown up and done time after time after time again in my life. Even in my family, my, my father, he always jokes. He says, if I need to know anybody about anything about anybody in the family, and if anybody needs help in the family, I know to come to you because you are the connector and you know, and it's not that you talk about everybody. It's not like I'm the, the family gossip. It's that everybody comes to me. Mm -hmm because I connect to them because mm -hmm. I'm so good at that. You are and so I, good at that. Thank you. And so what I'd love to challenge you, I love how <laughs> I love how I'm like, this is your assignment. No, like we need to see, we, I want to see a video of you owning that. I want to see you saying that. Like my name is Jasmine and I'm really freaking good at connecting the dots. I'm really good at helping you, you know, it may not be in the most conventional way, but if you want something, I can help you and show you and I can make you start to believe in yourself. However you want to say it, just owning that shit, you know, and I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I see you fully. I, I can feel that you can do that for others. And just like you saying that, how does that feel just admitting that? How does it feel just being like, I'm really good at that? You know, it's, it's a tad bit emotional. Um, yeah. It feels good. I feel more open and more light. Um, and it is emotional. And I remember a, a couple of years ago, I had a conversation. Um, my my partner, my biz bestie, my friend, um, Stacy Moore, she constantly tells me, like, why do you, I'm, I'll say, oh, so-and-so reached out. Can you believe? And she's like, why do you say that? Oh, I can't believe I'm sitting at the table with da da da, -da. Why, why are you mm -hmm. surprised? Why are you in shock? and has been waiting for me to show up and own that. And so having this moment and, and being able to say, you know what, I can, and I can, I'm, I'm going to, to do that video and I can't wait for her and for Warren and Roberto to see it and just to see what impact that has for me internally, yeah. you know, putting it out there. So thank you for that challenge, but it feels, it, oh, I got to take a breath now. Yeah, but, listen, <laughs> sometimes we don't need to say shit. We just need to take a breath. So let's take a right. breath here on the say it up. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. And we will not edit this pause right here. I'm letting my editor know we don't edit this pause here because I want everyone hearing. It's like sometimes when you say something out loud, you hear it and then your body catches up and you're like, oh, shit, did I just say that? So your body can feel in overload, it's a good feeling though. It's like a release, it's not anxiety. It's like a, holy shit, did I just say that? It's like, yep, you just said that, good for you. Yeah. Two words that I love, Alison Bird. You know Alison Bird? Yes. Alison, what is Alison. Yes, she's one of my dearest friends. 
And she taught me, she taught me a phrase that I love saying out loud. And I want to share that with you. Maybe you've already heard it, but when you said, oh, so-and-so, oh, so-and-so called me, or I'm going to be on so-and-so's podcast, the, the two words that I would like love for you to say next time, like something amazing happens is like, of course that happened. Yeah. Of course. And I love that. Allison taught me that and like to have more compassion for myself when I don't know how to handle a certain situation or I find myself really spinning. She'll be like, baby, of course you're reacting in this way. And it just gives you so much compassion for yourself. And even with yeah. all the amazing things that you have in your life, of course they want you, Jasmine, because dot, 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 you are amazing. And so when you start to, and when I say you, Jasmine, I'm talking to everyone listening. When you own your amazingness, it's no longer some big fucking surprise. It's like, no wonder. Yeah. Of course. Because you've now owned it from the inside. And why? Well, I would love to have you back on here in six months and you'd be like, you know, this is how my life has transformed since the day that I admitted, you know what? I am really amazing. Just, I would love to know what has happened in the next six months in your life. It's a date. It's, it's a, a date. date. Yes. Six months. I love that. It's a date. Oh my God. Well, I haven't been on a date in a minute. So, oh, yes. I would well, love get to ready. <laughs> we'll be ready. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, all right. Here's a light, light question that I love. Mm -hmm. What is, okay, so lately, what is the catchphrase that you have been saying out loud? If if there's any catchphrase that you've been saying out loud. Is there anything that you've been finding yourself saying on repeat to clients on, on social media when you're with your family? What's something that you've been saying out loud? Like uh, a <laughs> Oddly enough, it's our words matter. Oh, good. Yes. That's, our words matter. It. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that I've, I've been, I've been saying, you know, to my social to my community, um, but also to my family, to my children and, you know, to their father is that the words that we speak to ourselves and to others about ourselves and about others, they matter. Well, honestly, that's why I wanted to have you on the podcast. Cause I remember, you know, Warren sent me your reel and mm -hmm. I watched it and I'm like, I need to have her on the podcast because there's so much resonance with what you're saying. And so I love that, that our words, and I would say, you know, our words that we tell ourselves, not just the spoken yeah. words, but the words that nobody can hear but you, Absolutely. right? Those thoughts in your head. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Our, our words matter. Um, okay, what is something that, okay, by the way, I just need to uh, like uh, out myself. It's so weird for me having this question structure. So I'm like, okay, next question. I'm like, who am I right now? But you know what? We're just going to go with it because I'm loving these questions. I'm just like trying out this new format. So thank you for, thank you for being so gracious throughout this process. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I'm here for it all. Good. Okay. Um, okay. Next question. What is something that you want to encourage my audience to say more of out loud? I. See, you, you get me with the pick one thing <laughs> and I'm trying to be obedient. No, uh, one thing. Feel free to share whatever is flowing through you. There are no rules to this, how you answer this question. Uh, one thing that I would encourage them to say out loud. Um, goodness, there are so many, but I think that the first thing that I would encourage everybody to say out loud um, is probably the thing that we just, that I just admitted, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is that they are absolutely amazing at. Mm. I think that so often the conversation, you know, we are our loudest voice, like mm -hmm. the loudest voice that we hear is the one that is in our head. And so often we walk around, even when we are outwardly displaying, you know, confidence and, and um, self-assuredness. So many times we're having these conversations about, and it's the simplest languaging, like making a, making a mistake and saying, ah, was so stupid. Oh, this was so this, it was just tiny little words that make the hugest difference. And you start to embody that and you start to really think that that is your truth and it's not. And so I think that, um, you know, repeating to yourself in succession that, but then saying it out loud, I mean, that was just so freeing. 
that was just so freeing just now being able to say that and everybody um you know the thing the thing that kept me from saying it was that so many people didn't see it in themselves and so you felt braggadocious you felt arrogant owning absolutely it. i mean because we're taught to be humble right but there is such a thing as humble to a fault um you know, and someone had once told me that, you know, you can be a light seer and, and be so shrouded in darkness because you are trying so hard to be humble and, and, and humility is not always a, um, a, an attractive trait, right? Mm -hmm. um, or helpful. <laughs> or helpful, correct. And so, you know, for, for everybody to be able to say that I'm amazing, there is at least one thing that you're amazing at, at least one. And I'm sure that there's more than one, like nobody is just single talented, yeah. <laughs> you know, but just because, like I said, I can't whistle. And I used that because that is the first thing that came to my mind that everybody, I mean, everybody in the world can fundamentally whistle by the time they're like four, right? Like who cannot whistle? <laughs> so I could use that as, as a crutch to say that there's something like just really wrong with me because um, I just can't whistle. And I love that you can like, laugh at yourself. That's very important. Like Absolutely. I'm like, yo, you know, it, it's just not in the cards for me. <laughs> It's okay. I'm a buy a whistle. <laughs> I can do You're that. Fine. You will blow the shit out of that whistle. You'll be great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, so being able to, even though there are those things, being able to, to pull out the things that you are absolutely amazing at and just being here, like, I think that that's something that we overlook so often. Like the fact that you are here the odds of you coming into this world and then surviving the however many years you have been in existence, that in and of itself is a miracle. You are amazing, period. I felt that deeply just now. I never thought I'd make it to 40, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I've, I've done a lot of drugs and I've done a lot of reckless shit. I was driving the other day with my girlfriend and she's like, are you okay like driving? I'm like, listen, I used to drive fucked up on all sorts of stuff. Like, I, like I'm like i okay. Like I, I'm obviously very sober now, so you would never catch me driving under the influence of anything. But it's just like, when I think about how reckless I used to be and how little I valued myself, that's what really this mm -hmm. is about, how little I valued my life. Um, it just really hit when you said that, you know, like, mm -hmm. wow, we, you know, the odds and then the fact that we survived, like, man, when I think about the shit that I've done to myself and how much I've hurt myself, like that was really beautiful. Thank you for, thank you for that reminder. I think we all need to hear that. We need to hear that every day. Anyone who's questioning their worth needs to just remember that, like, wow, you not only made it out the birth canal, but you're now still here. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're doing great. You know, you're like, you're able Absolutely. to, yeah, you're here. Yeah. Um, thank you for yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. My sister always says you've survived a hundred percent of your worst days. Every wow. time I call her and I'm like, Oh, I'm so upset. She's like, baby, you have survived a hundred percent of your worst days. Is this your older you sister? Survived. Yes. Yeah. I have an older sister too. <laughs> They're special. Yeah. They are special. I don't know how she puts up with me. I'm a pain in her ass, but I am. I, I'm, she's still, I mean, I, I literally was staying at the Airbnb and she's like, She's like, Vachi, she's like, are you hungry? I'm like, yeah, whatever you're making for the kids, make for me. Like, it's not even a question. Like, she'll just, she's like, you're hungry? She goes, okay, I'm going to make you something. I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> I'm still very much a little sister. I love playing that role. My sister is a great older sister. So yay for our older sisters. Yes. Okay, so what is the most, well, maybe it could be what you just said, but what is the most badass thing that you were most proud of saying out loud? <laughs> the most badass thing that I was most proud of saying out loud um, mm, was a conversation I had with a family member. And uh, gosh, this is twofold. Like f the first thing that came to my mind was co my coming out story. But mm -hmm. then I'm like, no, really the thing that, that I was like, fuck yes, was a, a conversation with the family member that I had. And, you know, the, me and this family member, she's older than me and we've had a tumultuous relationship and, you know, what have you. And um, she said some things to me in this moment that just, 
made my blood boil. And normally I would have retreated into submission Uh and just eaten it and gone about it, you know, gone about my day and just carried it with me, but not spoken my truth. And in, in, in that moment, I I told her, listen, I am a grown ass woman. You do not have to like me, but you will respect me. And if you cannot respect me, we don't need to communicate. And for me, spending my life apologizing and trying to make people feel comfortable and living up to everybody's standards, which, you know, that's pointless. Like you're going to consistently be chasing a carrot that you can never reach. Mm -hmm. That was huge for me. That was huge. And I think that's probably the thing that I'm most proud about was standing up for me and um, saying the thing that wasn't popular. Saying the thing. Yes. Saying the thing that wasn't pleasant, right? It's not pleasant. It's not It's not easy to say. You probably rock the boat a little bit. But what I want my audience to really hear and what I got is the how succinct it was. You didn't explain shit. You didn't, it, this wasn't this melodramatic thing. It was like, no, you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to whatever, but you do have to respect me. And if you don't respect me, we don't communicate. Simple. That's what I want everyone to hear. Y'all, when you start to really value yourself, like, you don't have to have these long, drawn out, exhausting conversations. Oftentimes it's like two lines. No. Nope. Yeah. And I love that. I, I love how you just model that for us. Thank you. Yeah, it's two lines. And then, you know, uh, the other thing that I want to add to that is that it's, especially when it comes to relationships is, is understanding people are people. So people even are going to people. People are going to people. <laughs> People are going to people, and especially when it comes to people that we hold in positions of um, elevation over us, whether it be, you know, family, elders. You know, our parents, yeah. elders, correct, because we're taught uh, in, in many of our cultures, <laughs> that's, oh, just, yeah. that's your hard stop. Yeah. That is your hard stop. And what I've learned and what I would encourage people to, a lesson that that is just transformational is understanding that all of these people have had things happen that have shaped who they are and how they respond. And you can understand that and you can have empathy for that without allowing the behavior to impact you. Mm -hmm. So I understand you had past trauma. I understand why. And I am empathetic because if I, I can't imagine going through and experiencing the things that you you have experienced and it is still your responsibility to heal and to treat me with respect and it is my responsibility to set up that boundary and to enforce it absolutely you can have empathy without betraying yourself right i i i there are I'm, I'm an extremely empathetic person. I'm a licensed therapist. I look at everything through a psychological lens. I can justify the shit out of abusive behavior. I have justified the shit out of my own toxic behavior, and I've justified the shit out of my partner's toxic behavior. And at the end of the day, I had to address the most toxic person in my life, which was myself. And the toxicity that I was living in was that I allowed that behavior. And because I kept allowing that behavior, I then kept acting toxic back, right? It was just yeah. toxic back and forth. So I just thank you for just you know i'm always saying this on my podcast so i want somebody else to say it too it's like i'm not crazy for saying this you know what i mean it's like people are gonna people and ultimately you know you can't just wait around for people to respect you right you have to set that boundary you need to communicate what you will and will not tolerate and ultimately if that if you don't if you create a boundary and that person crosses that line um uh, crosses that line it is up to you to enforce that consequence, whatever that is, whether it's yeah. we don't talk anymore or we have limited communication or you don't, you no longer get to be a part of my life. You need to be the parent for yourself. You got to be the mom and the dad that you always wanted, that person who stood up for you. You, you. you have to be that for yourself. So thank you for modeling that so beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not easy, you know, um, it's never easy. However, the good feeling that you have coming out of it mm-hmm. once you have that piece makes it easy but also this is okay so going back to one of the first things you said about learning to be alone 
When you can learn to be by yourself and truly enjoy your company, it is a lot easier to enforce those boundaries because more often than not, we suck it up because we're terrified of losing that person because then we're like, wait, all that I'm left with is myself. And I'm like, fuck it. I like being with myself. So if you're not adding value in my life, you're just simply being a pain in my ass and I don't need that. (laughs) Right? So that's why you need that relationship with yourself because when and if that time comes for you to walk away, you know you're going to be okay because at least you have you. You have you. Okay, last question. Um, What do you say out loud to yourself when you look in the mirror? Oh, gosh, I say so many things to myself. Depending on the day. So let me, okay, what do you... Uh. Yeah. Anything that you want to speak to. Yeah. So today I was, uh, I came back from my walk with my son and I was in the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I was like, dang girl, waste is coming in. Yes. 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 I love that for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes, You know, but I try and always say, you know, good things about myself. And, um, it's so funny because the, the post that connected us, you know, so to speak, um, was a reflection of a time when I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And what was so difficult about that is that years before I didn't have that challenge. I was always (laughs) told this story the other day. I was the little chubby girl that had no, like no boundaries. Like you couldn't tell me I couldn't do something. Mm -hmm. I was the little short and I'm short. I'm only 4'11". So imagine as a child, I was like two foot nothing. Mm -hmm chunky at cheerleading practice tryouts like I'm gonna be a cheerleader I don't care what anybody says and I deserve to be here you know Mm. um went to high school same thing with drill team I never had that feeling when it came to my physical being that I was not deserving or I was not beautiful or I was not any of those things. It wasn't until I got into a relationship where that started to be chipped away at and I lost that, right? And everything that I loved about myself that I felt was amazing and beautiful, I was told was horrible. And then slowly ingesting that, you know, year after year after year, that wore away at that. And I knew I had to, pull that woman back. I had to pull that little girl back, right? Because even though I, in in one sense, I felt like I had to apologize for my existence. In the other sense, I knew I was worthy. So the two can mm-hmm. coexist. Thank you for saying Absolutely. that. People think it's like all or nothing. It's like, I always say this, I'm confident and I'm also insecure and they both exist. What matters is how Absolutely. I talk to my insecurities. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I tell people all the time, I was never like the, oh, I'm the big girl. I can't get him in. No, I can get who I want, when I want, how I want. It's up to me to filter out the good and the bad, right? And what I accept and what I don't accept, but they absolutely can coexist. Absolutely. So I tell my thing, myself wonderful things every day in the mirror. I tell myself I'm beautiful. I tell myself, I mean, you know, I, I have those, damn, there's a, you have a gray hair now. Wait a minute. There's a chin. What? Uh, but you still look good though <laughs> and, and that's the thing it's like it's not am i ever like i think people think i'm like never I, i'm not unkind there's a there's a lightness i can tease myself i'm a, I'm very jovial with myself i'm like so like i haven't gotten my hair dyed i have all these grays and i looked in the mirror today i'm like damn girl you gotta go get your hair done i'm getting my hair done tomorrow but it's like there's no there's there's a lightness that i want to have with myself that i think I'm I'm serious as cancer. I tell people like, I'm actually a very serious person, uh, and I've taken myself very seriously. But I I really am enjoying this playful light attitude that I have with myself. That's clearly showing in all my relationships. So I love that you said that. Like yeah, you can like you can have days where maybe you don't feel the best, but can you still? Like, here's the thing about personal growth, Jasmine. I'm sure you know this. It's all fine and dandy when you're feeling good and you're feeling yourself. The, the, the real work is, can you be kind to yourself when you feel like shit? Can you still find that morsel of kindness? Because that's when the real work begins. It's easy when you have your makeup done, hair done, or you've just come back from a walk and you feel like, you know, I'm feeling good. It's easier to love yourself when life is easy. But when you feel like shit, can you be nice to yourself? That's, that's the real work. You know what I mean? Yep. 
And that's that real intentional work. And sometimes yes. you just, you have to force yourself. <laughs> yes. It's literally stand. forcing yourself to not be a bitch. Yeah. Like, can, can, can I stop? Can I not be a bitch to myself in this moment? Thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to say it's been beautiful having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what projects are you currently excited about? What do you have going on that you're really excited to share with my audience? Any, any offers, any programs share, share with us because I want people to work with you, learn from you, join your community, all the good things. Thank you. Yeah. So three main things we have going on right now is we are getting ready to release the Our Words Challenge Matter. Mm. I mean, Our Words Matter Challenge. <laughs> We're just saying it out loud here. Yes. Right. You know, so the Our Words Matter Challenge. And so we're walking people through how to reframe the conversation that they're having with themselves mm -hmm. and then with and to others and to help build that community. So that's number one is the Our Words uh, Matter Challenge. Then the Build Your Strong Plus community, which is the community that we have. There's three different levels that you can come in at. Um, we have live workouts. We have nutrition training, mindset training, lifestyle content. Uh, you get live workouts with me, group community um, conversations. And it's just all the things that you need to build the life that you desire on your own terms, without guilt, without shame, without anybody telling you that you can't, you shouldn't, you know, all of those things. We give a big old, big old middle finger to all, of, yes. all those can'ts and yes. shoulds and shouldn'ts. Um, and then getting ready to release the Confidently Courageous with Jake podcast, which I'm so, so, so excited about. Um, and where we are speaking to other people that have um, gone through tremendous life transformations and come out on the other side thriving. And they're sharing their experiences and their knowledge and the things that helped them push past those like uncomfortable, hard spots and situations, you know, to come out thriving. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I love that there are so many different ways that people can connect with you. I love that you're starting a podcast. Like you're, you have the most soothing voice. It's it's very soothing and nurturing, strong and tender. I love the combination. Listen, yeah. That is one of those things that I love hearing now because my voice was one of the things that I hated about myself for a very long time. I could not stand listening to myself. Mm. And um but that's why who better than to help people with their words than the right. person who hated their voice. I mean, like, that's why you're the perfect person to do this. Work. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, what you don't know is you and I have a common thread. I am a thespian. I started acting in children's <sighs> theater when I was itty bitty. Oh yes. <laughs> and you know so what? I remember yeah. 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 Sorry, go ahead. I just got so excited. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Finish your well, thoughts. I remember, <laughs> you know, rehearsing monologues and needing to film myself and watch them back. And that was the most difficult thing for me to do. So now hearing people, I'm, I'm hearing this more and more frequently that, you know, people find my voice soothing and it just fills me with such joy because I'm finally at a place where I love it. And now that I have begun to love it, I think that that has um, come across to others and people say it so often to me. So thank you. Of course. No, I'm it's it's you have a very soothing, nurturing, but like I said, strong voice. Like when I hear you, I can tell you've been through some shit, right? Like you're you're soft hearted, but you are unfuckwithable. That's something that I, I like to own. It's like I'm very soft hearted, yeah. very soft hearted. And you can't mess with me. Correct. Right? So, yeah. So it's, uh, and then also, uh, last question, how, God, I'm so fucking awkward with these questions. It's, it's so funny, y'all. I'm like laughing at myself because it's like, you can tell I'm trying to like break out of the structure. It's like so hard for me to transition. It's, it's, I'm just, I'm just laughing at how much I need structure, but also like, I'm trying to find my way flowing. It's just the last goddamn question, Jasmine. How can people yes. connect with you? <laughs> I'm so awkward right now. I'm laughing. It's like, who am I right now? Go ahead. How can Listen, people connect with you? <laughs> such a real experience. So uh, you can connect with me across social media platforms, Jasmine, uh, Jasmine R. Murphy, um, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube, it's Build Your Strong. Mm -hmm. Um, as so I'm on all social media platforms, jasminemurphy.com and uh, buildyourstrongplus.com. Thank you so much for being here on the Say It Out Loud podcast. I truly appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you and everything that you're doing. And I was so, so super excited. So thank you for having space for me. Of course. 
beautiful. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.